Good morning. I'm Rick Rowland. I'm the engineer and the owner of Certified Refrigerant. We got something we'd like to show you today. We're first going to talk about the function and what it is, and then we'll demonstrate exactly how to use this. So here we go. There's six hoses on this refrigerant transfer manifold. Let's look at each individual one. So we label this one here as the source cylinder vapor. The blue hose here, if you follow it over and through a shutoff valve, it is connected to the liquid port here because we're going to go to the top of that cylinder and, and get vapors. So we want this to be hooked up to what will be the liquid port on that valve. The manifold has six hoses. We want to make sure that they get hooked up to the right destination. So when we take a look at this, if they're hooked up, there really is no reason to break this down. Hopefully that when you would change the tank, you would change these two hoses in the adapters. As each tank is drained, you would change these two hoses. Uh, your recovery unit could stay attached all the time. So let's go through each individual hose. So this hose right here, the blue hose that we've chosen, is the source cylinder liquid. So if we follow that blue hose over to the source cylinder, we should be able to see that it happens to be red this time, but we're positive that that is the liquid connection on this cylinder. So if we follow that source cylinder liquid, that being our source cylinder, we wanna make sure that the blue hose is hooked up to the liquid port. Don't assume that red is liquid because they do swap those around. So make sure it's hooked up to the liquid port. The other source cylinder connection would be the red hose here. And that's the one we're gonna have the sight glass in that we're gonna note that the liquid is traveling past. So this is the red hose going to be hooked up to the source cylinder vapor port. And if we follow that over, we've got a shut off at the last second there, and that is the vapor port. We're positive of that. And we've already opened these up, so we're ready, ready to go. The other connections on this side, pretty simple. This is two hoses hooked up to our recovery unit, and this would be the recovery out. So we hook that up to the output of the recovery unit. This is recovery in, so it's hooked up to the input, or the going in on our recovery unit. The last two hoses are to our storage tank. So this says to the 240 pound cylinder liquid port. And this red hose comes up here and we can double check, and make sure that we're hooked up to the liquid port of this tank. The very last hose would be the hose going to the 240 pound tank, the vapor connection. It goes around and it's hooked up to the vapor port. So those are the connections of the refrigerant transfer manifold to our setup. We're ready to actually do some work here. So let's get started. One thing that I want to beat and beat and beat until we make sure we understand it is that first off we want to move the liquid out of that can real quick. So when we're in the mode of moving liquid, all of these handles are pointed straight up. All five of them are up. So if I see that, I'm ready to move the liquid out of that can. All these handles being up for that liquid transfer. Let's go over here. If you remember when we hooked these up, we opened the valves already on the cylinder itself. We're going to open these two valves that we've got at the end of the hoses. They're put here, so now we can start to do the job, and when we get done, we can close them off and hook it up to the next cylinder. So with these two open, the handles are all pointed up. We're just going to turn our recovery unit on. Make sure these tank valves are open because we're sucking vapors out, going through the recovery unit, pushing on that liquid. As you can see now, the sight glass is completely full. It's hard to discern that there's something going through it because it's completely full. But we'll notice when that starts to get empty, we'll know. Two things, the sight glass will break up and turn vapor, and we'll also hear a sound in our recovery tank. So right now, let's start our stopwatch. See how long it takes us to get that liquid out. As you can see, we took about a minute, minute and a half, 
and we transferred the 20 pounds of liquid that was in this tank. We warmed it up, we pushed that liquid out, a minute and a half, the sight glass cleared up. I also hear the hissing in the tank, which tells me the liquid is gone. So again, back to the benefit of this manifold, I'm not going to ask any questions, I'm just going to move all these valves to the side. And now, I'm going to finish removing the vapor that's in this can. Let's start timing that and see how long it takes to do that. You can see that we're in the process of moving the vapors. The inlet gauge is showing us there's still about 90 pounds of pressure in that tank. The uh, other gauge shows the destination tank has about 200 pounds pressure in it, which is normal for all the R22 that we might. We've already got storage gas in that destination cylinder. So we'll watch this, we'll come down to zero, and then that tank will be complete. Okay, we can see that the recovery unit has effectively recovered all the vapors out of that can. It's in a vacuum here, and uh, this unit in particular is not equipped with the shutoff, so it'll continue to run, but the can is empty. So we'll move on and go to the next can. We just emptied this can. We took about 20 pounds and we put it into the storage tank. And so now we're ready to think about switching cans. We're going to do this can here, which is going to be interesting. This can weighs 80 pounds. 80 minus the 26 tear weight means there might be about 54 pounds of gas in there. So anyways, let's disconnect this. So we're done with this can. We can close the inline valves. We're going to close the tank. We have pulled this into a vacuum, but before it goes back into service, we'd suggest that you put it on a vacuum pump and know that you've pulled it down into a good micron vacuum before we put it back in service. So we'll disconnect these. We haven't lost one ounce of refrigerant. Let's put this bad boy up there. 80 pounds. Oh, there you go. Somebody really did a good job of filling this one up. Main thing again, we're going to take this red hose. We want to make sure it gets hooked up to the vapor port. Let's not be fooled by the colors. But I see that this blue handle is the vapor port. The red hose gets hooked up to it. The blue hose then is hooked up to the liquid port. Again, if they get hooked up wrong, it's not the end of the world, but it's just not going to do the job that we want to do. I'm going to open these valves. I'm going to turn this heavy thing back over. Okay. The very next part would be to say that I again want to understand that I'm going to have to take the liquid out of this first. So when I go to liquid, without rhyme or reason, all these handles must be up. You got all five handles up. I'm ready to take the liquid out of that can. I'm going to start my recovery unit again. I'm going to open these two valves. Right away my sight glass fills up. And we'll start our timer to see how long it takes to get that liquid out of there. Like we said, this can had 54 pounds of refrigerant in it, and we emptied it. The total time, liquid and vapor, is just a little bit over five minutes. But we took 54 pounds of liquid, and then the vapor out of this can put it in this storage tank. So, once again, to kind of summarize, we, we created the refrigerant transfer manifold to help contractors take these small cans and to quickly, easily, cleanly, without spilling any of it, uh, put it into larger storage tanks. So then when this larger storage tank is full, then that's what can be sent back to certified refrigerant and we can reclaim that gas for you. So again, if you have the components, we'd be willing to work out arrangements so that you can own one of these manifolds or you can pay the security deposit. We have a bunch of different programs on how you can get one of these manifolds to allow you to bulk up the small tanks, put it in a larger tank, which is much easier to ship. And we'll be glad to help you in any way that we can. 
Thank you and God bless. Have a great day.